Father God, we thank you for just the opportunity to come to you today, Father, and do things in your name. Now, we do have a place over here for electronics if you have issues with them. <laughs> anyway, Father, we love you and we praise you and we thank you for what you do. And we thank you for the opportunity to be outside with a direct connect to the heaven's gates. But, Father, we know we don't need to have a building. We don't need to have structure where two or three are gathered in your name. You're there in the midst. Well, Father, you have more than two or three here today. And we are all here gathered in your name. So, Father, we know that you are here in the midst. So, Father, we ask that you work your mighty works upon us. Use whoever you need to use to touch whoever you need to touch. And let whatever that we do and say be honorable and pleasing to you, Father. We love you. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit that you poured out upon us. We thank you for your Son that died upon the cross. And we pray this in your Son's holy and precious name, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> I got up this morning and I was, uh, God was working on me. He was really working on me. I don't know if any of you have ever prepared messages or had God give you a message. And then you have to figure out what you're supposed to do with it. I know there's several of you here that do prepare messages. But when he does one message, and then he says, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, here's another message I want you to do. But wait a minute. Wait a minute, that's not what I want you to do. Here's another one. And as I'm pulling these out, they are actual messages. I spent three hours in study and in prayer and in digging through the word and putting together them messages. But wait a minute. God said, wait a minute. I got another one. But then he said, also, you could just read my word because my word is a message so I was as I was praying and meditating over what I should talk about today God said this one right here would be the best one for the moment I may end up digging into one of those too but let me see everyone's ID driver's license school ID come on let me see them. But you got one, right? You got one. You got you got a CDL. You're not work not quite. Driver's license, driver's license, permit, driver's license, dri CDL. Driver's license. Oh look, we got somebody whipping one out here. Look out. There we go. I got mine right here. Mine's right here. Boom. Yeah, yeah. Well, we all have IDs. Anytime you get ready to buy something or do something there's an age limit sometimes when you when you're asked to uh, say go to the movies let's go to the movies <laughs> you got pg you got pg 13 then you got pg 18 in it well, anyway then you got rated r they can actually card you anytime if you are a smoker or use tobacco products yeah, you know, I'm not going to get into all that. I laid mine down at the altar and left them there. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but anytime you use, uh, go to buy a product like that, you have to show your ID. You go to buy alcohol if you're if you prefer to drink beverages, you have to show an ID. You get pulled over, license and registrations, please. I mean, I've heard that before. Yeah, license, insurance, and registration. Mm. 
what about doctors, nurses, police officers? Do we ask them for their IDs? Bless. Just leave him alone. He's all right. He's just being a dog. But do we ask them for their IDs? Or do we automatically know when we come up on a doctor or a doctor comes into the room that he's a doctor? Or when his nurse comes into the room, we know that she's his nurse, right? Right? Or a police officer. We know them just by their uniforms and the way they carry themselves. Or a military person. We don't have to ID them. What I'm getting at is we all have a spiritual ID. We all have a spiritual ID. Jesus said in John 13, 35, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Now, <laughs> I want you to pay close attention to the last part of that verse. It's referring to his greatest, one of his greatest commandments. It says, if you love one another. Now, we're going to jump up a verse to 34. And it says, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. The new commandment that Jesus gives us is the qualification. Love one another. If we're consistently showing love to one another, there's a radiance about us. There's a radiance about us that can be seen by anybody. Those of the light and those of the dark see the radiance. If we are a children of God and showing God's love and loving one another, it's coming through us. We are glowing in his love. I'm going to jump, I, I jump around a lot of scripture. So we're going to 1 John chapter 4. Verse 4, it says, you are, of, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Of error. In other words, what it's saying is, not only does he give us an identification card of light, but he also gives us power also. He has given us the power to overcome the world. And he's also given us the power of discernment. By knowing what is of the spirit of truth and what is of error. By our actions, people will know who we are and what we stand for. There is no denying a child of God. Jesus said it straight out of his own mouth that you will be able to tell the difference between a child of God and a person of the world. He says it right here in Matthew, and I'm sure you are familiar with this. Matthew chapter 7, 16 through 20. You shall know them by their fruits. Do not gather grapes or a thorn... Uh, do not gather grapes of thorns or fig of thistles. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. 
A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by the fruits you shall be known. A most surprising identification card, huh? Now here's the kicker. No, if we hold the right doctrine, it has nothing to do with that. Not if we have membership in the right church. Not if we work hard for justice. Not if we acknowledge the scripture. Not if we are diligent and successfully using our talents. The only Christ authorized mark of the excuse me there, Lord, sorry. Grab my tongue and hold it. The only Christ authorized mark of discipleship is love one another. Is this the way you want others to recognize you? Through love. As I was saying, I might dig into some of this over here, and I think I'm going to. It'll be all right. <clears throat> and this one, I, I had been holding back to talk about. Because it was requested of me to do some research on it and talk about it. Well, I pray to God he listens to it later. We all struggle. There's no doubt about it. Now, I'm just, I just talked about our identification card and how by our fruits we're going to be recognized. Now, just remember this. We still go through troubles and struggles. Life is full of temptations and desires that we want. But, we, but it seems to be just out of our reach. Things seem like they would be easier and we'd, ha we'd have more if we just disregard the biblical laws and what God and Jesus laid down for us, wouldn't it? I mean, we look at our neighbors down the street. Well, they got a fancy car. They got a new boat in their driveway. <laughs> they, ha they seem like they have no worries. Plenty of money. They do whatever they want whenever they want. You know, we want that, sometimes we get in that phase in our, even as a Christian, we get this in our thought process. You know, I'd like to have a bigger house, a newer vehicle, motorcycle, bigger TV. I go on and on. It is when we are struggling is when we get distracted the easiest. When we're in that valley, we get distracted. One of the biggest questions we ask is this. Why are sinners down the road doing so well while we are sitting here struggling to make ends meet? Another line is, this just isn't fair. I can recall a time I probably said that. Then we begin to question our faith. Why me, Lord? We've all been we've all been there at some point in our lives where we question our faith. I know we have. It's times like these when we are vulnerable. We're vulnerable to backsliding and falling from grace. I know there's some people, or I'm going to just say there's some that believe in once saved, always saved. I'm not so sure about that. What I do know is once you have become a saint, a child of God, you can fall from grace. You can backslide. But our Father in Heaven loves us no matter what. 
It says here in Psalm 73, verse 2 through 9, But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they played like other men. Therefore, pride compasses them about as the chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart to wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouths against the heavens, and their tongues walketh through the earth. Now, I don't know about you, but if you look at that and you think about what I just said, when our faith gets weak and we're wondering why the neighbor down the street's got more than we do, David obviously felt that same way too at times. Talks about them people that are lofty. During these times, we struggle the most. And what I mean we struggle the most is we struggle the most with our faith. We feel as if we, or we feel as if there isn't too, we feel as if there isn't anyone there to help us. We're all alone. We're all alone. No one seems to care that we're struggling to make ends meet or if we have any food on the table. We begin to spiral down out of control. Just like Satan intended for us to do. And here it comes. He is pouring more and more lies into our mind. This leads us to live in our mind and close the doors to the light. The mind is a dangerous place. And silence can be deadly. If one gets in one's own mind and starts questioning themselves and they close their ears to silence, in other words, they cannot hear what God has for them because they have closed their ears, it's dangerous. So what they're doing is they've given up that idea of being a Christian for the moment. Psalms 90, 94, 16, and 16 through 18 says this, though. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Unless the Lord has been my help, my soul have almost dwelt in silence. When I said my feet slippeth, the mercy, O Lord, help me up. The Lord's mercy help me up. The thing that we most remember as children of God. The thing that we must remember as children of God is Satan desires us more than the non-believers. Because we are warring against him. He wants us more then he wants a non-believer. A non-believer, he can walk up into their life and take them anytime he wants. That's not a battle to him. It's the Christian, the believer, that he wants, he desires, because he knows that we have power. We have power over him because we have God on our side. But the minute we stop looking up there and start doubting ourselves, backsliding falling from grace you're losing your power and once you start losing your power that allows that Satan to crawl right into your ear and starts pouring honey I don't, well it's not really honey I don't consider it too sweet myself but you get the picture the key to winning the battle is mentioned here in Luke 22, 20, uh, 32. And we covered it. 
for the past two or three weeks. And it's covered several times in the Bible. It's faith. Faith is how you overcome backsliding and how you overcome the devil. He says right here, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. That he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art coveted, or I'm sorry, when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. So in other words, what he said there is, I have prayed for you that your faith will fail not. And once you've been converted, in other words, after my death, and you have realized the ultimate, I want you to strengthen the brethren the way I've strengthened you. I've showed you what faith is. Very true. It shows the power of prayer right there, too. Here's the thing. We're all going to fall. It's inevitable. It is inevitable. It's going to happen. It is written about so many times in the Bible. But here's the thing. The Bible also gives the children of God a plan. It gives you God's instructions to overcome it in every scenario. All throughout the Old Testament, you see people that struggle with their faith, that fall from grace. They struggle with their faith and fall from grace. That by faith in God, they get back up again. They get back up again. <clears throat> Proverbs twenty four sixteen, For a just man falls seven times and rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. For a just man fall of seventh time seven times that goes along with uh, forgiving seven times 70 times or 77 times seven times is just seven if, if you figure if one day is a thousand to, the, to God and a thousand is one day it's seven times is to God seven thousand times seven thousand times is to seven times to God he's gonna lift you back up because you are a just man. You believe in God. Because we fall from grace or backslide, this all this allows God those teaching moments for his children. I love this part. This just hit me so I mean, it kind of went bat. It really did, because I thought about my dad teaching me lessons, and I think about me teaching my children lessons. That is no different than God using us and teaching us lessons every time we make a mistake. He picks us up. He dusts us off and said, don't do that again. It hurt, didn't it? It hurt, didn't it? First, I'm going to show you mercy, and then I'm going to give you grace. I'm going to give you grace. I have to show my kids mercy all the time. Woo! I can tell you about it. Put it this way. My kids are learning how to write cursive because schools ain't doing it, but I'm using it through discipline. <laughs> God love me. Woo! Anyway, I'm getting off here a little bit. But like I was saying, even though God uses these moments to teach us they don't come without punishment. They do come with punishment when we fall. I can refer back to the prodigal son. I mean, there's a prime example of a son. The prodigal, fa the prodigal father, the son, fallen from grace. 
going and plundering all of my all of my riches and all that God had given me or that my father had given me. Y'all get the picture. I come back. And, and now, mind you, I was punished during that time. It got to the point where I was feeding the swine and eating with the swine. And then I had to swallow my pride and humble myself and come back to my father and ask for his forgiveness. But shall we remember how the father looked upon his son from afar off? He was elated because he had, how many times had he been standing there every day looking out, watching, waiting for his son to return? One of our strongest lessons in the Bible about faith is the book of Job. That man was tormented. Look, just talking about that man just gives me them. Mm, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But by his faith, he was multiplied in all of his riches in all of his days. But in Job 5, seven, starting with 17, Behold, happy is the man who's, whom God crediteth. Therefore despise not thou the chastising of the Almighty, for he maketh sore and bind up. He woundeth, and his hands make whole. He shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven, there shall no evil touch thee. In a famine, he shall redeem thee from death. And in war, from the power of the sword. Thou shalt be hid from the scorch of the tongue. Neither shalt thou afraid of destruction when it comes. Are you hearing me? thing is family we all have our moments we all have our moments where we fall it's not so much that we fall and it's not so much that the fall <laughs> the fall don't hurt does it fall don't hurt it's that sudden stop at the end because when we're in that downward spiral, where we're not thinking. We're on our pity pots. We've fallen away from God. We haven't been punished yet. We haven't hit our bottom. Sometimes you have to hit rock bottom before you can get back up again. Satan leads God's saints, and notice how I say saints, into temptation to fall away from him. He does it with drugs, sex, politics, wanting what other people have, peer pressure, popularity, not wanting to stand out, wanting to be loved. The biggest one, though, and it even says so in the Bible, that it doesn't say it is the biggest, but it says it is one of the strongest ploys is the money. Money is the major manipulator, one of the biggest manipulators there is. <laughs> Psalms. 33, 24 through uh, 28. Though he fall, he should not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, and now I am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. He is ever, he is ever merciful and lendeth. And his seed is blessed. Depart from evil and do good. 
and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. I know people struggle all the time. And they ask, well, if I've backslidden, if I've slid, if I've fallen from grace, God frowns on me. He doesn't like me. He doesn't want nothing to do with me. I'm embarrassed to be around others. I'm embarrassed to be around my family. I struggle with being around other Christians. That's why they don't come back to Christ. They don't understand that God says it's okay. It's going to happen. He says forgive seven times, 77 times. Well, guess what? He didn't say that just for us. Because he does it for us himself. That's where he shows us mercy and then gives us grace. I'm going to close with a little, little story. I'm pretty, most of you are familiar with the prophet Hosea. Okay? Now, I'll tell you what. Hosea was a man of faith. His wife was a harlot. God told him to marry her anyway. The reason why God told him to marry her was because at the time Israel was being no different than a harlot. No different. The same suffering that Hosea went through was the same suffering that God was going through with Israel. And he wanted Hosea to understand his pain and his suffering that he was going through. <coughs> Hosea and, and when I say this, the thing is, God loves his people so much that through his prophet Hosea, he said in chapter 14, verse 4, I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely, for my anger turned away from them. Amen. He will forgive your backsliding. He will turn his anger away from you. And he will forgive you. I know, I don't, I don't believe I'm talking to anybody here today, but if I am, if, if you need some prayer, if you need to stand in for somebody that's been in one of those situations, or if you just need to stand in for somebody, period, or if you need prayer yourself, Let's get it in. Let's get it done. I feel the Holy Spirit here right now, and I'm just pumped. I thank God that we have a, a nice crowd today. I know I went kind of off the, I put two messages in one. And I know I kind of went, to, to sum it up, though, if you've got the ID, for they shall know them by their fruits, and you've backslidden, It's time to get your ID back. Because you're still a saint. You're still a saint. And he protects the saints. Let's pray real quick. And then we'll do some more prayer and all that good stuff here. But while it's flowing good, God, I thank you for the opportunity to just share what you put on my heart today. I know I didn't do all four of them, but. Father, what I was, you gave me, I pray that whatever came out of me was what you wanted, Father. And I pray that the hearts and the minds were open today to whatever was said. Father, you are amazing and awesome. And I thank you for all that you do, Father. I pray, I thank you for Bethel Ohana. I thank you for this neighborhood. I thank you for the people in this world that still strongly believe in you. And Father, I pray for those that need you, especially in this upcoming election. I don't normally talk.
talk about po politics, Father. But, Father, we are in peril. I pray that every person that steps into a voting booth on Tuesday, before they ever walk out their door, Father, I pray that you touch their heart to get on their knees and to ask you what is best for this country. Because, Father, we know that this country needs to come back to you because we've slid so far away from you, Father. But on a good note, Father, you are a good, good Father. And you take care of your children, and I've seen it time and time again in my own personal life. And, Father, I've seen it in my family members sitting around here where you've come into their life and you've taken care of each and every problem. They go through their valleys, but they know to reach out to each one of their brothers and sisters that you've put in place for them. And it's all good, Father. You are awesome. We love you, Father. Amen. The floor is open for the uh, open mic, prayer, worship. So. I just want to thank Bobby and Roger last night because one of the things I struggled with was when I fall down feeling like, feeling like I'd never be good enough. I was always struggling to try to be good enough, but they reminded me that his blood makes you white as snow and you're clean and forgiven. And I <laughs> Praise God for that. Uh, I'm reminded of uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. It says, So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. And uh, every time that someone had their faith quickened, it was because God spoke to that person. And God spoke to Abraham. You will go to a faraway land, <laughs> and your descendants will be as numerous as the stars in the sky. And so all he had to do was obey, obey God, you know. And, I, and that's what, and you know, God is, uh, you know, it said in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, okay? And um, God loves to speak. He loves to talk. God never stopped talking. And, and so it's up to us to listen to Him with an attitude of, uh, of uh, expectancy and confidence. That he does speak to his people. Right now, uh, there are people that are saying, Thus saith the Lord about the election. And it's like, oh, well, I'll, <laughs> I'll wait until after the election to see which one is Thus saith the Lord, you know. And uh, <laughs> But he does speak, and the, my sheep hears my voice. And so... And, uh, and, you know, when he was talking about uh, falling from grace, there's a scripture for that. That's in uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 4. It said, uh, you who are seeking to be justified by the law, you have been severed from Christ. You have fallen from grace. And if that is interesting, in that particular scripture, people who fell from grace fell from grace because they were seeking to be justified by the law which means they were seeking to try to please God by doing religious things. And, well, there's only one way to please God, and that is through faith. Faith alone is the key to, be, to, to having uh, uh, your life changed from glory to glory, your life being, uh, being rescued from the domain of darkness. And, uh, and and God is speaking to each one of us, and He and, we, and we're drawing near to Him and say, Lord, what are you saying right now? And and and, and so, they, they, uh, I'm thankful that the Bible became alive in my life. It's 
confessed when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and I was starting to be a Catholic priest when I got when I mean I received the baptism in the Holy Spirit in my in nineteen seventy five. And and I, I I'm th- and, and I was just listening to Brother Vance live on Facebook in Atlanta, Georgia. He had came uh, well, how many years ago now? Ten? At least over ten years ago. And what was considered to be one of the deadest churches in Orange Park. And it was known as the Family Worship Center in Center Street. It was the Church of God of Prophecy. My brother Vance came over there, young guy. He was older in his 20s. And he was a radical. He loved to, he loved, he loved to get out in the street. He prayed and fasted all the time. But the Holy Spirit fell in that place. People got saved. People got filled with the Holy Spirit. People got delivered. And it kept on going and going and going. But guess what? Not everybody was enthusiastic about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and what I'm going to what, I, the, what the Lord is saying to me, there are two things that are, t- that are now taking place in the last day. The first one is in Acts chapter 2, um, um, right there when it said, in the, when, when the Holy Spirit fell on the Gentile, on, on the 120 disciples in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. And uh, then Peter got up and said, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joah. In the last day, when I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh or all, all mankind. And young men and young women will prophesy. And then the, 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 it said the, the, the children will see vision. And old men will dream dreams. That is, we are right now in the last day. And he said, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and all mankind. So we are in the last day. And so the prophecies have not stopped. The visions have not stopped. The dreams have not stopped because we are in the last day. And But then you fast forward to 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. It's got another one right there. It says, in the last day. That men will be lovers of self, lovers of pleasure, the arrogant, unholy, <laughs> and uh, disobedient to parents. And then it said in verse 5, it said, holding to the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. That is in the last day. So all of a sudden, you got two scriptures. They both proclaim the truth of the last days, that there will be a group of people that are hungry and thirsty for the Holy Spirit, and he will fill them with his Holy Spirit, and, and, and then they will begin to prophesy. Then they will begin to see vision, and they will begin to dream dreams, and they will begin to flow in the Holy Spirit and the operation, the gift of the Spirit, and they're going to become on fire for God. And so this, and so, and then you've got another group. They love the flesh. They love the world. But they were religious. How do I know they were religious? Because they held to the form of godliness. By denying the power of death. And here's what's happening. There are many churches where it's been echoed for years right now. Absolutely no manifestation of, <laughs> of the Holy Spirit whatsoever. And so you've got somebody coming in from a foreign country saying, boy, you, you, this is amazing. You, your church is in America doing really good considering God's not in it. God's not in it. And so, <laughs> and it's like, and it's like, um, a civil war between the 
those who love the manifestation of the Holy Spirit and those who simply just uh, 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 have uh, just put their faith in religion, but it's dead, it's dry, it's, 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 it's no life in it. And so, and so they, it's not, you know, I had, well, I, I could go on and on, but, but they just, <laughs> Well, you know, I had a dream about 10 years ago. In the dream, I was in a train, and I was taking a tour of America, looking at the beautiful scenery here and there. And I look out the window, and I saw a guy cheating another guy with a rifle. And he started rolling down the hill, and all of a sudden, the thought came to my mind in the dream, I'm in the middle of a Civil War battlefield. It's like I was being transported back in time to when the Civil War broke out between the North and the South over slavery, uh, the issue of slavery. And I looked around inside the, locom the, the, the locomotion or the uh, customer's uh, thing, and, and I saw a, a wife perched on a tripod, but nobody was using it. Then I woke up from the drain, and I said, Lord, what is this? You know, that's, uh, uh, you know. And the Lord began to speak to me. You may think you're just walking in life, just taking a tour, but, you're in the, but you are in the middle of a civil war. And it is between those who are fighting for freedom and those who are fighting for slavery. And, <laughs> and you know, it says, it, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, and there is freedom. And it says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, it was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to a yoke of slavery. And it goes on. And, and so, so it, it, uh, are we... And, and here's, and here's where, 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 where we are in the, in the dispensation of time. You know, it's important to know what period of time we're in. Sometimes we're in a period of preparation. And that means just drawing close to the Lord and spending quality time with Him in the secret place. Sometimes it, it, we're in a period where it's all out war. Well, <laughs> that's time to take up your weapon the weapons of the Holy Spirit, the weapon of the Word of God, and go fight, and, uh, and, and, and so on. But if we, if we can know where we are now, we're obviously in a crossroad in America. We're in a crossroad, obviously. It's, it's not. And um, so, and, and, and it is so amazing that there are those that, that will do everything they can for slavery. Slavery to sin, slavery to religion, slavery to hopelessness, drug addiction, homosexuality. I mean, even the Muslims have got that one right. They've got the, their Koran, and what they do with the homosexuals, they throw them off from the high place, and then they die. And it's really ironic that some people embrace both the LGBT and the Islamic religion, but well, that's not compatible. Because, <laughs> because if the Muslim were to come in and enforce the Sharia law, one of the first groups to be executed will be the homosexual. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the shootout, there was a shooting in the clubhouse in Florida, Orlando, Florida, by an Islamic radical and it was a homosexual club, nightclub. And what does the media do? Cover it up, cover it up, cover it up, cover it up, cover it up. And so, but anyway, there were there, and so God is looking for people who, who, who proclaim, this is the word of God right here. It says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You know, abide in the word. And, you know, I'm... You know, in John 17, 17, sanctify them in your truth. Your word is truth. And I'm thankful for the Bible. I'm thankful for the word of God. I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth that says in John 16, 13, for when the spirit of truth comes, 
He will guide you into all the truth. For, for he will not speak on, on his own initiative. For whatever he is, he will speak. And he will disclose to you what is to come. Now, this is the good news. Not only is he going to speak to us what is the truth now, but he will reveal to us what is going to happen later. You know, in Amos 3, 7, uh, chapter 3, verse 7, it says, Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret counsel to his servant, the prophet. And Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, it says, Call to me, and I will answer you. And I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. So we have the promise of the word of God that we don't, we don't have to walk in darkness and, 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 and confusion and, 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 and uh, turmoil and, and, oh, what, God, what's going on, God? What's going on? What's happening? What's going on? Peace, I live with you. My peace, I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled nor let it be fearful. Well, hallelujah. Jesus was asleep in the boat. The storm was raging. This is a hardened fisherman. And then they said to Jesus, Jesus, don't you care that we're perishing? And he just woke up and said, a storm be still. And the fear of God came on the disciple because he had the authority to still the storm, and then Jesus said, where's your faith? <laughs> well, <laughs> how much he was saying, listen, buddy, you had Jesus in the boat. Jesus that's asleep in the boat is better than no Jesus. You know, he, I was in the boat. Where's your faith? See, and our faith has got to be in Jesus. Him alone. Him on faith comes by healing and healing by the word of Christ. He speaks to us during this time. Fear not. Fear not. Be not troubled. Be not anxious. Do not run. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> and it it again. Ah, ah, you know. And so, we, and, and, and you know what he's saying to us? And then, and then it's the last thing I'm going to say. It's Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. If then you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above, where Christ is seated at the hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. So I said, God, help me. To not be distracted, not to be filled with all the negative news, Facebook, news, news, gloom, you know, and our fears and, and uh, terrorist attacks and deception and everything. Folks, God said to us, my sheep hears my voice. And just walk with confidence. Walk with expectancy. Let the peace of God Rule your heart. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, shall guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. I pray for the Lord. Amen. Woo! And that goes right along with us. Uh, you got that going on you've got the aura which gives you that ID that you don't have to have a card to show for because you have Christ in you because and the power of Christ in you is more powerful than anything and like you said it surpasses all understanding <laughs> anybody uh, anybody else we need to get some prayer going because I know there's a few people need prayer my wife's having surgery on Tuesday we need we need to pray for Michael. Uh, we need to pray for sick one here. <laughs> hey, how, can we can we like can we 
Can we pray at you for a distance? Okay, that'd be fine. All right. All right. Let's get up here and it's a. Uh... Yeah, go ahead and stop it. 